three. Okay, we are back on uh, Dr. Belfort. So, so you've um, done some research in in uh, the use of um, intermittent forces um, applied to the teeth in the upper arch or in the maxilla, and for the viewing audience, intermittent forces are forces that are not continuous. So, like um, pushing every minute, a push every five minutes instead of a continuous push. So could you could you talk a bit about that and the homeo block and, and what you've discovered and and uh, how people can benefit from this? My favorite topic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well well let's just look at it this way. The way nature wanted us to be is to have our tongue flat against our palate when we swallow. So every time we swallowed uh, and with our tongue flat against our palate we send an intermittent light force to the teeth, very light, less than a kilogram. The tongue is pushing. Yeah, the yeah. tongue, and that's normal. That's the way we develop, with okay. the tongue gently sending this intermittent, every time we swallow, which three or four times a minute, intermittent light force to the periodontal ligament. It's picked up by receptors in the ligament around the roots of the teeth, this little tiny force. So the concept, part of the concept of the development of my appliance was to send that same intermittent light force to the teeth to generate a response from the body. But that wasn't enough. We now also had to wake the body up because the face develops uh, at, the, at the sutures where the bones join. That's where the bones grow. There are uh, cells in there, uh, which even, even as an adult, there are undifferentiated mesenchymal cells, adult stem cells, which can become uh, what we call osteoblasts, which lay down bone. So we needed to stimulate those sutures also. So the appliance was designed with a, a unilateral bite block, which provides the correct compression and torque on the sutural system to stimulate the sutures once again to generate bone growth. This is called epigenetics. This is changing the environment to allow for the expression of unexpressed genes. See, when we uh, develop, we don't develop uh, necessarily to our full potential. So the use of the appliance is to signal the body to express the genes that have not been expressed and allow for the jaw literally to grow bigger. And I, I've done this for a 79-year-old woman, for example, where you see dramatic mid-face volume changes. So uh, the appliance, I've treated hundreds of patients this way. The upper jaw will get bigger. We can change also. There is a lower appliance which can remodel the alveolus, which is the bone that the teeth sits in. So you can make the lower arch bigger, but the lower arch always develops the same way. The upper arch uh, in the maxilla, we used to think there were growth centers, but now we know there are growth sites, multiple growth sites. So when you stimulate growth in the upper jaw, the body generate is programmed for symmetry. So a lot of our faces are not symmetrical. So what the appliance does, it generates symmetry in the growth because that's the expression of the genes and completing the development. So I've been published on that, the ability for the appliance to generate facial symmetry and of course to generate in increased volume. Uh, this is what I do. I generate increased volume, wider smiles, and I improve facial symmetry. And this is without tipping the teeth. Exactly, because the teeth just go along for the ride. We're actually working with the bone. It's not about teeth. It's about generating the proper bone growth, and the teeth just move accordingly. And, and what happens to someone's airway when they, when they, um, they use this type of uh, appliance? Well, a lot of us have trapped mandibles, uh, particularly folks with uh, narrow jaws, people who don't breathe properly through their nose. It all starts by not breathing through your nose properly and keeping your jaws separated and you're starting to breathe through your mouth with your tongue low in your jaw. Those folks, when they bite down, their jaw is forced backwards. 
when I develop those jaws, the mandible comes forward and the air, and airway uh, is opened up. But furthermore, when we develop the maxilla larger, we allow for proper breathing. And the also, uh, what I, we've been showing is that reduction. we show reduction in inflammation, mm -hmm. uh, which is critical. Inflammation is the basis for most every disease known. And it's certainly involved with uh, in, uh, poor breathing. The tissue is inflamed, the airways are smaller. If we reduce the inflammation, we breathe better. Um, the turbinates, which warm and moisten the air, which are in our nose, they are like barometers of inflammation. They inflame, swell and inflame very easily. If you generate uh, balance, autonomic nerve system balance, I don't want to get too complicated with this, but mm -hmm. Uh, you generate autonomic nervous system uh, coherence and you develop anti-inflammatory cytokines and you reduce the inflammation in the nose and I can breathe. You know, this is the key to the, the appliance's effectiveness. The, what the appliance does by developing the maxilla, it allows us to breathe better through the nose. There are a hundred appliances out there that will bring the jaw forward and the tongue out of the throat for sleep apnea. But some of those cases fail. They fail because there's improper breathing through the nose. It's not the airway behind the tongue, which they are treating, is not the cause of the problem. When the cause of the problem is breathing through the nose, developing the maxilla is what works, and that's what I do. So when I develop the maxilla, I reduce the airway resistance. There is something called upper airway resistance syndrome. That results in poor sleep. When I reduce that resistance, I'm reversing upper airway resistance syndrome and allowing for a better night's sleep. Hmm. So it can be life changing, it can be life altering um, in a in a nasty way when someone has an underdeveloped maxilla and it can be life altering in an amazing way when someone has a properly developed maxilla. This is absolutely true. I'd like to take it one further step because sure. uh, I'm actually involved right now with a research project being conducted at Albert Einstein Medical Center. Part of that research project is well, we know that there's a linkage between the way we breathe, sleep apnea for example, and cardiovascular disease. So right now we can we we can very effectively uh, 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 test the health of the cells that line our blood vessels. Mm -hmm. See, the whole uh, cholesterol theory was based on uh, a plaque uh, forming formation in our in our blood vessels. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that if the lining those cells that line the blood vessel remain healthy, then plaque is, it doesn't do anything. And there's no uh, deposit of cholesterol is, is, is not forming dental plaque or occluding the arteries. There's no arteriosclerosis. So basically what we're showing is what we're looking to show. We haven't shown it, but there is research project. When we, uh, you know, we breathe uh, properly, uh, we can improve the health of the blood vessels that are lining, uh, the cells that are lining the blood vessels. And once again, nitric oxide is involved because that, dilate, di that is a vasodilator. It dilates the little capillaries mm. so that the blood supplies those cells properly and they remain healthy. Mm. Okay. That's a whole other world. It's a whole other world. This is cutting edge right now. Cool. Um, okay, so I want to get as many people as possible away, or everybody, away from growth stunting, away from unnecessary extractions. Um, so my pitch to them is, you are headgear, you get extractions, you're mo more prone to a double chin and wrinkles and a flattened facial profile. Is that true? <laughs> it happens to, happens to be correct. Uh, all of that happens to be correct, but the simplest way to look at it, it's all about breathing. You know, um, we think we remain healthy when we go to the gym, we do some aerobics, we watch our diet, maybe work out with weights a little bit, and we think we're healthy. 
But when you go to the Far East, uh, you go to the East, they'll tell you that it's the body's energy and it's breathing. Somehow that oldest civilization that's much older than ours is much wiser. Mm -hmm. Breathing is really critical. And the body energy they're talking about is really our autonomic nervous system, which runs our body. So the critical issue is, what's the best thing to allow us to remain healthy? And that is two things. You know, maintaining body coherence, the coherence of the autonomic nervous system and proper breathing without going into great depth. If you don't develop your upper jaw, you, you're not functioning well on both those counts. The development of the mid-face is the most critical issue in autonomic nervous system coherence. What is that, autonomic and breathing. nervous system coherence? It's uh, stress level. You know, um, basically ahead. people, when they uh, don't sleep, they say, I I'm stressed out, I can't sleep. Yeah. So what it really means is there is more sympathetic tone than parasympathetic. That's what we're talking about. Okay. L last question. Um, what do what do parents need to ask their their dentist or orthodontist who's about to treat their kid to know whether or not um, what's about to happen is going to be healthy or unhealthy for their child? You don't want to do anything that compromises the growth of the jaws. It's just that simple. Okay. Done. Anything else you want to share with the parents? You want to say anything uh, else you want to say about the homeo block? Uh, well, I uh, I appreciate this opportunity tonight to, uh, and I believe that I've I've said said quite a bit. So I, I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much for the opportunity as well to speak with you and and the, uh, I'm I'm sure, you know, parents will really benefit from this. So thank you. Oh, good night.